Two types of corn rusts occur in the U.S. Corn Belt, common corn rust and southern corn rust. The two corn rusts are caused by different fungi, but they do have similarities. Both diseases survive as parasites on living tissue. That means the diseases don't overwinter in Midwest states. However, early and proper identification is crucial, and growers should know that corn hybrids may react differently to rusts and other diseases. Rust diseases in general can have an impact on yield, but the magnitude of that impact is going to be related to how much leaf area, for instance, is affected by those diseases, and, and we call that disease severity. The more and larger lesions and pustules that we have of any disease, it's going to have a greater impact on yield because it competes with grain fill. Another potential scenario that we can have is secondary impacts on corn health, and so one of those might be standability. And so one thing that can happen is compromising a large area of leaf tissue might lead the plant into cannibalizing its own stalk, therefore weakening it. And weakening these stalks can have an impact on standability later in the season. And when those stalks are weakened, for example, what will often happen is we'll have stalk lodging or stalk rot diseases happen later on in the season that can cause a lot of headaches for our farmers later on and potentially slow down harvest. The symptoms may not always look the same from hybrid to hybrid, and so in particular, some that are more susceptible may produce larger pustules that have more spores in them, or it may or may not produce a yellow halo around the lesions produced by either of these rusts. And so that can cause them to vary somewhat, and it can make it more complicated for people to differentiate between those diseases and others. The primary features of common rust are the presence of those dark red to cinnamon brown spores that are produced on either the top or the bottom side of the leaf. These spores are produced following infection and they are pushed out through the epidermis of that leaf surface, breaking that surface like they rip it open. And those spores will actually rub off on your hand. And so that's an easy way to differentiate between whether you've got a rust disease or something else. The primary features of southern rust may be similar to that of common rust, but things that we want to notice that are different might be spore color. The spores produced by southern rust tend to be more orange to tan in color. Southern rust pustules tend to be smaller and more densely clustered on the leaf surface, and most of the spores are produced on the upper leaf surface. You can sometimes see a few produced on the lower leaf surface, especially near the midrib but they do produce copious amounts of those orange to tan spores. Common rust in particular can look a lot like southern rust as the uh, color variations in the spores do vary quite a bit. And so in the laboratory is the only sure way to differentiate between these diseases because what we look for under the microscope are spores of certain shapes and which ones are the predominant ones. That's a sure way to diagnose those diseases. For growers, it's good practice to scout the crop throughout the season to monitor for rust that may have developed early. Since rust fungi don't overwinter, they have to blow in from southern states and progress north as temperatures and humidity rise. Common rust favors temperatures in the upper 60s through the 70s, which is why it is usually seen earlier in the season. Southern rust prefers warmer temperatures in the 80s, posing a problem later in the growing season. Protecting corn against rust in the grain fill stages is most important in preventing yield loss. Generally, yield impact relates to how much leaf area is affected by the disease. A secondary effect could be a weakening of the corn stalk that may lead to standability issues and stalk rot, also headaches for growers, who should know that one type of rust usually has more of an overall negative impact on corn. Common rust is much more common than southern rust, and we routinely see common rust earlier in the season and generally overlook it because we're not as concerned about it. However, southern rust is a more important disease to us because the fungus that causes that disease is more aggressive and we have less resistance to southern rust in most of our commercially available dent corn hybrids. The development of southern rust might mean that some people want to consider treatment depending upon how much rust is in their fields and what stage the crop is at. The other thing I would look at is the forecasted weather conditions because we know the weather conditions that are favorable for many of these diseases, in particular southern rust. And so if we knew we had warm, humid conditions forecasted, that would mean that rust could develop and increase pretty rapidly and that a fungicide may be necessary in some cases. 
Delaro fungicide from Bayer is formulated with two heavy-hitting modes of action to maximize control of even the toughest diseases, including rusts. Learn more about Delaro at www.cropscience.bayer.us.